it's a great answer to the Herith. You know where the Divine Judgment, you, yeah. you get that suppression down and you lock him down instantly, but you also give a big exactly. ultimate over to the Valentina. Exactly. And it's good night. The guy who can go for these crazy angles, very similar to Suns back in MPL yeah. Mina. But now I want to talk a little bit about Fnatic Onik because usually when we see the Kaja, we expect the carry. Yeah. But in this game, do we expect the carry? You know, there are a lot of damage dealers here, not a lot of beefy boys. Yeah. And maybe that illusion is trying to force out Falcons to go for more damage output and then they can yeah. pull off something like a Brody. Yeah, yeah, yeah a Brody, Brody or a Beatrix actually. Yeah. Because the, the carry is going to struggle against their hearth in the lane. If that goes, exactly. That's a very difficult thing to go for. And now it's going to be Baksha, very good pick, and the Benedetta. All right. Signature ding. Yep. Got to be uh, splitting the map for that one. I think Fnatic really is a good Beatrix game if they pick it up. Beatrix. Yeah. The only thing is that the skill is, you know, like they're... There you go. Yeah. The skill is going to be something that Fnatic Onyx have to look out for. I feel like the Farsa really has to do well. But either ways, thank you very much, gentlemen, for your service here during the draft. But now, starting the second match of the day, we're passing it over to our casters into this game it's going to be falcons on a blue side up against fanatic onic on the red side both purple buff starts at this point of time but let's just talk about how this game is going to progress right because i would imagine that they want to be pretty proactive towards the exp side for the side of the falcons but at the same time it feels like Fnatic. hey if you're going up to the top side i can attack the bottom side if you are caught slacking i can go to the other yep uh, again very different uh, dynamics when it comes to the opposite side of the map in the gold lane you have the beatrix oh no super gets caught out pushing keyboy away pretty good damage output from that mid lane from team falcons yeah they just want to slow him down as much as they can right even boxia should have priority over little wander but it looks like keyboy he was able to create just enough space for him in the meantime right at least until level four we're not expecting fanatic Onic to be doing anything too crazy yep uh something to note here Kyrie rocking the war cry and that's interesting. Again, you would assume from the time he lands into a couple of slashes, then the Tempest of Blades deals a lot of damage. That's just value on value on value squared. Mm -hmm. And hopefully he's going to make that work, right? Here comes, ooh, Kyrie trying to go, forcing out Good Knight to flicker away. These are the small advantages you're looking to create just before the turtle spawns. Yep, it's tough because uh, the uh, mid laners have yet to hit level four. Mm -hmm. So that means they're going to have to double time it up so that this turtle coming up in the quarter of a minute could be better secured for their sides. Well, I mean, I was expecting maybe one of these teams to like start sending their mid laners to the EXP a little earlier than expected, but it looks like Falcons, right? Sneaking around Keyboy. They don't know that Goodnight is on this side of the map oh. just yet, but the fact that he hasn't shown up mid, Lupti, he's pulling back just in case. All right, say no more. Falcon seems to be ahead, maybe by a step. Now Keyboy, looking at the turtle, letting it go. Can Kyrie clutch it? Not going to be finished with the purple just yet. Looks like Team Falcon's going to secure. Yep, good night. He's immediately on it, stealing away the Divine Judgment, getting Kenji the kill that he needs on top of the turtle being slayed. Where's the give? Fnatic on it, checked in on the turtle, and here it is. Kyrie going for the purple. The opposite side. Grant that purple. He's going to come in. Tempest of Blades up. He's trying to jump away. Good night. He's trying to make sure that he can't slip through. <laughs> Finch points out of the way. And even CW. Wait, hold on. Look, the, on the opposite side, losing this trade against Ding so far. No Petrify used just yet. Ding could look to dive. That boy elusive. He's quick. That boy quick. And that could have been disastrous. Again, you're looking oh! at Team Falco. Oh. He's so close, he tried to win, he attempted to dive, used the Petrify, including the Electo final blow. What kept him up, what kept him up? All right, he's got the Jerkin. He's got the Jerkin. That, that was the main difference, because Fury Hammer was Ding's call. Is Lupti trying to build the Thunderbelt? On early on, on early, on? early? Looks like it. Mm. Those are the ingredients, those are the components. That makes sense, it makes sense, but let's look at this replay one more time, because, like, it, it's so quick. Good Knight walks up to Keyboy, instantly grabs his ult, joins him, and pulls him away, transforming him outside. Whoa. But wait, now the Feathered Airstrike's coming through. All the suppress, real good stuff, coming in for Keyboy, finding his revenge, the foreshadowing from the replay already coming through. But Good Knight, this is where it gets dangerous, right? He's still holding on to the Feathered Airstrike. That does more than close the gap. If anything, now it's Fnatic Onik who have the tempo up. Because again, you have the Finch Poison Kyrie, and then you have the Bakshi Unite, the rollout from Kenji. So now you see the difference. Now you see how Fnatic Onik might make the most of this 10-second respawn timer. 
and allow for Kairi to get back on track, get that farm up. Yeah, and better yet, he's already ahead of Kenji by one full level. Kenji, he's trying to keep up with Kairi at this point of time, but these rotations are very, very fast in any bit of wasted space, Wade. Look, D, he's going oh. to get that final slash down. He just finished just the Thunderbell. Ding. He's trying to get on out of there. Oh, oh. Electro Final Ball with the Petrify. Kyrie picks it up. The alley oop you were talking about. The oop to the alley. Kyrie and Lutpi. Amazing work from the two in trouble in mid. Sons, he's trying to survive. Final oh. Ray wings by wings. Good movement as now the Feather Air Strike in to the Divine Judgment. Kyrie coming for it. He's chasing, but no, only the back line. Lutpi is going to do the rest of the work. That's a double for him. And even with the Zaman for Lark, he's out of there. He doesn't want to be part of this. Ding comes back in. And that's going to be Lupti taking out three people by himself. And Keyboy, he doesn't mind. He flickers away into the bush. He does it. Ding picks up Keyboy just in time. But at what cost? That wasn't the time. It's possible for Benedetta to go 3v1, 4v1, but not at four minutes. It's very difficult. And this is a situation where you got to ask. Who is the beatdown? As a Benedetta, he's building full damage. But right now, I think what Team Falcons need to do is play defense. Mm -hmm. They need Dink to hunker down and take control of the XP lane, not go find team fights wherein they're just cleaning up for scraps. It's difficult to be Team Falcons right now. You don't want to be a vulture. You want to be a Falcon. Exactly, ah! right? It's about these rotations. The the, the, unfortunately, if Ding didn't die just now, he would have been there. He would have been a step ahead of Fnaticonic. But that's the thing. It's about tempo at this point of time for both of these teams. Even for Fnaticonic, they're very patient with it. This does confirm our suspicions and early Thunderbelt on to Lutpi. All the while, you see Ding putting down his foot on the cr on the clutch, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, build uh, the uh, Blade Hepatases and then go defense. Something to note. Kyrie now on his way to a piercer. Yep, yep. I think this is a really good... I mean, he technically, had he just forced the piercer first, that would have been nice, but still... Zerker's Fury is good. Kenji, oh, Lopti misses it, but it doesn't matter. Kyrie's still in the back, and they give that kill over to CW. Ding, now part of this. He could jump in, but it's not looking good. Divine Judgment is already through. Ding does not find the targets, but still catches two. Whoa. Can he get a third? No. Eye for an eye to get him away, but Lopti says no more. You do not take out my teammates without the Phantom Tax. Lark finds one, and Lopti, he could chase, and he could actually win this with no Zaman Force. He just needs to buy slime. Oh, no. Flip Flickering behind him! It's too late! Lark goes down and Lupti just showing that the Thunderbelt is better than you think it is! Like a true Sigma! Coming in, saving the day! Kenji tries to make the most of a losing situation, but that could have been a preview of what Lark looks like in the late game. Here's a quick replay of how it all started. Very good ult control from Fnatic Onyx. They know when ults are to be used. They know when bodies are to be taken down. And it just so happened that in this micro moment, Lutpi just went god mode. Ultra instinct. <sighs> and Level yeah. five, man. Luffy stuff. Truly, truly. I love Naruto. Oh. Oh, what a shot from CW taking out Ding just like that. Good stuff coming in from Fnatic Arctic. And that's the last turtle scored by the MPL Indonesian champions. Four time, four time, four time, four time, back to back to back to back. Even far away from home, they are soaring beyond the clouds. Matt, is it just me or is it just Maybe Kenji's getting caught out a little too soon, and he's not where he needs to be. Well, here's the problem, right? As much as Kenji wants the front line, he needs angles. He needs the threatened positions of Fnatic Onik. But Lupti, at this point, he's playing really... Well, hold on. The pick is starting to look good, and it doesn't really matter. Keep going. He doesn't have an opportunity to move at all. Just CC to the ground. You were saying, I'm curious. Yes. I was saying that they need to make sure that they can telegraph where this fight is going to be. We're looking for choke points, mainly because Ding really works well in these types of positions, right? We saw their back line getting chunked almost 100 to 0 without getting touched by the Electro Final Blow. And I understand. And so far, I think that's what he's doing now. He's trying to corner it off where they can go and now he's in trouble! Oh, he's trying to have some movement, but it doesn't really matter. Super not in position to peel away from him. And Fnatic Onik find another kill once again. Good night. He's got to be careful here. A single CC can put him out of misery. All right. Ding doing some work up top. He's going to get that push on tier one. But 
down mid. I think that's the main artery that both of the teams need to focus on. Fnatic Onyx is 3k ahead. That's huge. Honestly, I'm still thinking, when is Lark gonna get the dance? Even in that last team fight we're in, you know, they, they could have gotten away with a huge trade, a huge blowback. Fnatic Onyx just knows when to deny this little boy his playtime. Yeah, I, I I think it's good that they do, right? That's what this entire composition is for. Ooh, final slash onto good night. Oh, Feather Air Strike, oh. one more tick. No, does not find it. And Super is able to cancel it out. They do lose a flicker, but at least good night is alive. Now, Fnatic Onyx will slowly encroach on the space key boy. He does have the divine judgment. He needs to pick a target. Oh, dang, he's out of there. No electo final blow. This is starting to look really, really good, but he's waiting for Sans to get his Alt back up. Kenji, he's gonna engage, but no, nobody's following up on this. They're gonna back up. Wait, hold on. Sans is getting a little too low here. He's already used the Purify. Sky Piercer purchased by CW. Uh oh. That's two sources. That's two sources. Of a kill switch. Fnatic Onyx definitely on the offense now. Down bottom, Ding pushing back Kyrie and this rogue wave. And uh, Falcons. Are trying to go for the contest. Are they just baiting out this Lord? I feel oh. like they oh key boy, he flickers for it. Now they can punish him. Look, they flickers as well. The try and peel him away. Lark finds one CW, takes super as a trade, and now they're pushing them out of their jungle now that Kyrie has regrouped with the team. Alright, a two-second dance is better than no dance. Mm -hmm. Lark definitely played a key role in pushing oh. back Fnatic Onyx. Now the jump oh, once more. Look, see, he's chomping. Electro final blow. Petra finds it too. Stolen feathered air strike. Cut CW down. Jewe can't get in. Oh, good night with a clutch. Ult coming in. Forcing Kyrie back. A secured Lord by Ding. Falcons eating good. I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting the junglers to be the major, uh, the major sources of damage, and as well uh, as Good Night and Sans. But honestly, it's the EXP leaders, and that's what's problematic for Fnatic Onyx right now. Again, mm -hmm. up until the 10 minute mark, they've been calling the shots. They've been winning, but. That's where they need to be. If it's the cores that's working, Cheoe and Kyrie, that's all good. But since you mentioned it's the XP laners that make the difference, I think Fnatic Onyx is caught up in a weird spot. Like, wait, 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 wait. Why can't Kyrie do much? Yeah. Why is Cheoe getting caught out second time already? I mean, the panelists mentioned this before, where a lot of comps are having secondary sources. Wait, here comes the conceal. Kyrie Finch poises out of there, has plenty of energy, and he actually spots four members of Team Falcon. He sees Ding by himself, but look at this, right? Kyrie will have to eventually use his all eye for an eye and elect the final blow out from Ding. And this is why he's been minimized, right? That raw damage forces him to ult too soon. Ding is amazing at, at what he's doing. He's basically acting as a m threat magnet, a uh, mm. thunder rod uh, from Fnatic Onyx, so that whatever they're doing cross map, he's a single catch all universal answer. Uh, th that could have gone so wrong, but Ding is just so mechanically skilled at the Benedetta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, to be fair, as long as Ding is trading alts with Kyrie, it's so worth it, right? At least it gives Team Falcons an opportunity to punish, especially with no iframes. Now, in the meantime, we are seeing both teams wrestling for control. I mean, the main difference, I'd say, is Fnatic Onyx still has the Gila, Tiga, the crazy one in Sans. You're right. He's still unkilled, man. 308 has a Purify set up. No matter what Good Knight does, no matter how well Ding controls half of the map, a quarter of the map, I don't think Super nor Kenji nor Lark can find Sans. I think even better, right? It's the fact that Sans has been staying so far back in these fights that even Good Knight, he's not just utilizing the IMU every single time to steal the Feathered Airstrike. Sometimes, wait, hold on, Kenji, getting chunked out for at least 50% of his HP. Ooh. Conceal comes through Feathered Airstrike as well. Electro Final Ball gets canceled. He dies, CW takes him out. He's making sure he's got that triple. Get the Maniac, give him one more. That is the Grand Finals MVP. At your service, Chewie, looking to close it up. Le Sauvage scored in the group stage of MSC 2024 at EWC. That's going to be the call. It's endable. It's endable. What a play coming in from Fnatic Onyx, really taking it to the next level here. A step above the rest. Beyond the skies lie the Sky Kings, and they are flying high in their first game in all of the Mid-Season Cup this year. Gideon, what a performance. It was a roller coaster.